Today, I'll be showing you how easy it is to set up the second generation ring alarm motion detector in SmartThings. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Bud. Welcome to Bud's Smart Home. I am a YouTube creator who enjoys creating useful and innovative smart home automations using compatible SmartThings and Echo devices. I also do smart home automation tutorials and product reviews. Recently, I reviewed a ring alarm window and door sensor. If you want an attractive and responsive contact sensor, I highly recommend the ring window and door sensor. Just tap on the video link in the top corner of your screen to learn how to add that sensor to your SmartThings setup. Today, I'm presenting the Ring Motion Detector. This sensor is designed for indoor use at operational temperatures between 32 and 120 degrees Fahrenheit. It's equipped with a Z-Wave S2 connectivity. The Z-Wave Security 2 framework provides enhanced security to all the nodes to which it is connected, thus making it a powerful protection system for all connected Z-Wave smart devices. The device has an impressive line of sight of up to 250 feet. The design allows you to mount the sensor on any flat surface or you can also mount it in the corner of a room. It is powered by two AA batteries and it is reported to be capable of ignoring pets if the device is set to the lowest sensitivity settings and it's mounted at least seven and a half feet above the floor. Unfortunately, the sensitivity settings are not an accessible option when the device is installed in the SmartThings app. The SmartThings app does provide the ability to monitor motion, tamper alerts, and battery status. You can also adjust the device's re-trigger interval in the device settings. Ring advertises their device as compact. I would disagree with this characterization. If you place it side by side with the SmartThings motion sensor, you can see that it's a bit more substantial. However, it is attractive in appearance, and if your goal is to make intruders aware that they are being monitored, this will definitely do the job. Okay, let me show you how simple it is to get the Ring Alarm motion detector set up in the SmartThings app. Since I already have the sensor installed, I'm gonna first show you how to exclude it from the SmartThings app. And we're gonna start by opening the back cover of the device. And as I set this cover aside, I want you to note that there's a QR code which is printed on the back of the cover. We'll be instructed by the SmartThings app to use that code when we're ready to reconnect the device during the inclusion process. So to begin device exclusion, first we're gonna open up the device and I have it in devices in my family room. So we're gonna tap on the Z-Wave sensor you see there. And next we're gonna tap on the three dots in the upper right hand corner of the screen. And we're gonna click on edit. And at the bottom of the screen, you're gonna see the delete device. The app will ask you when you click tap on that to confirm that you want to delete that device. And then we'll go ahead and confirm that by tapping on delete. All right, now that we're in exclusion mode, we must hold the reset button on the back inside uh, of the device. And we must hold that for at least five seconds with either a pin or a paper clip. And while holding that reset button, you're gonna see the light on the front. It'll begin flashing rapidly. And then after about five seconds, it'll change to red and the device will be excluded. So let's go ahead and give that a try. So 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005. Release, and you see the device is excluded. It, you'll also note that once you do that, the device will be in pairing mode, and that's indicated by it flashing green three times. You may not be able to see that, and then there's a pause, and then it flashes three times again. All right, now that the device is excluded, allow me to demonstrate how easy it is to add the ring motion detector to the SmartThings app. First, I'm gonna go ahead and exit completely out of this app to make sure that 
uh, the exclusion is registered. Open up the app and let it refresh. Then we're gonna tap on that plus sign at the top once the app has fully refreshed. We're gonna tap on device. And then we're gonna tap on scan nearby. We're then going to press the front button of the sensor for five seconds. So that's this button down here. And uh, when we release the button, uh, it'll flash red and the sensor should be added. So while we're pressing this button, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but the green light will flash rapidly. So 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005. Release the button. Oh, it says, okay, it's found it. So now at this point, we're gonna tap on the secure setup option. And it's gonna ask us shortly to scan the uh, QR code. So we'll go ahead and hit next. All right, there it's asking for the QR code. So we'll go ahead and using the device, we'll scan that. Okay, and it'll take just a second to verify the code. And if all goes well, you're gonna see a success message here. All right, so now you can tap on the device and rename it if you wish. And at this point, the device should be added to any voice assistance that you have as well. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tap on go to Z-Wave sensor. All right, so uh, sometimes when I've added this in, in uh, testing, I see this screen, other times I see all the functions. If you see this screen, uh, you'll want to go completely out of the device, or out of the app, I mean. We'll go back into the SmartThings app. I'm gonna try before I open that up is to reinsert this cover, make sure that's not the issue. All right cover is reinsert, reinserted. So let's go to devices now. All right, so I think it's good now. It's showing that motion is detected. So it appears to be working fine. Now the device's default re-trigger period is 180 seconds, which in my opinion is fairly long. So if you tap on the three dots at the top of the screen and you can select uh, settings, and you can shorten the re-trigger interval. You'll see a statement that longer re-trigger periods result in longer battery life. However, I'm gonna reset uh, my re-trigger at 30 seconds. That setting seems to work very nicely for my situation, so we'll go ahead and change that to 30 and hit save. Now I recommend that you close the app and then open it back up that allows the app to refresh and register that new setting. So we'll go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and close completely. Open back up. All right, and we'll let the app completely refresh. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go into devices. And we'll open up the device here okay and once back in the device setting we can test the tamper switch by opening the back cover while viewing the tamper alert monitor to remove the back cover you just push down on the top of the rear cover the cover will slide down to a particular point allowing you to pull the cover away from the device and while removing the cover you will see the tamper alert registered as tampered you replace the cover and after a couple of seconds, you'll see the tamper alert change to no tamper. So how about the Ring's price point? As of the making of this video, the Ring motion detector is about $10 less than the original SmartThings motion detector, which of course is now made by Aotech. 
So if you'd like to purchase either the Ring door sensor or the Ring motion detector, just look for the links that accompany this video. Reviews for many other SmartThings compatible devices can be viewed on our Buds Smart Home website as well as our Buds Smart Home Amazon store. Well, that's a wrap for today's episode. Until next time, keep automating and God bless.